comprehending conditioning. The fundamental nature of conditioning is to reinforce the message that that conditioning is the most important thing in the world. Your mind inside of your head about yourself will attempt to keep your attention riveted on the conditioning. That conditioning coming from splits, according to the hierarchy, in alignment with the affinities. And if you don't know what those mean, you're going to learn in our analyst training to comprehend the conditioning, what people are oblivious to that actually runs the show that they identify with their mind's eye. That is the biggest relief, my friends, when you can get out from under the thrall of the conditioning, the program, the people, your past history, what you think should be, when you can let go, disassociate from that negative and false belief system inside of you that's riding you to your death, to the depression or despair, to the discomfort, to the dis-ease. When you can let go of that mind story and you can instead be an unattached observer of the openness, witness, watch. Don't believe me, try it and see. Use your authority to make decisions, not the I inside of your head about yourself. Today, we are going to be talking about the awareness of conditioning because understanding the personality without connection to the design is going to be part of our process today. And we're going to work with the chart of Alan Leo. Now, in reality, when you look down at that chart, you may think that that chart is so full. And if you're new to this design experiment, you might think, oh, that's so much definition, how lucky they are, how fortunate, how blessed, blah, blah, blah. Really, it is about whether or not you can pay attention to your authoritative process, in this case, the sacral response, the energy resource, the lighting up of energy. And even if this being were to be told in no uncertain terms about the openness and the conditioning factor. That awareness of that conditioning accomplishes nothing in and of itself. It is about following the decision-making process, aligning with one's truth, one's inherent authoritative process, your decision-making strategy. So just a reminder, just because we know this doesn't fix what's happening with the shadow self. When you look at the basic need of the not self mind, it is that it has to satisfy the demands of its openness. This is raw, raw's way, raw's, raw's words, raw system, human design system showing us the science of differentiation. And yet funnily enough, in the shadow self, it's a lot more homogenized. The science of differentiation is the study of what makes us different. The openness does not. Although we have a specific factor, you could say, of mm, life aspects within the openness that can pull us towards this or that or a different hierarchy, in general, the shadow self, the openness, is really easy to predict once you get the language down. And that's one of the things that you'll learn at our classes at IHDS. So now, shadows can be incredibly transformative, according to Ra. When you introduce somebody to their shadow, that black cloud that can get in the way of their shining light, you bring them to the one thing that can help them totally transform their life. And they know it. And you know it because you too have gone through this process yourself. We have to get them to be aware that that shadow is the most important thing for them to grasp so that they can understand what is going on so that they're aware of how to avoid that pitfall. They can avoid it. How do they avoid it? They trust what they've never trusted before in their life, their authority. They let go of trusting all the places where they've tried to give authority over to either their mind or others. That's what is speaking when we look at the openness. So our shadows 
can contain gifts for us, our learning and wisdom potentials so that others may also learn from our process. Because once you've mastered something and you use it for others, wisdom for others, that is part of our outer authority. Any place where you have openness, you have the potential to bring your light of awareness to the other, your personal process, your experience, the depth of your awareness. Now, if we look at Alan Leo, we're going to find when we look at any chart, really, is that the most basic structure is about activation and definition. Activations and definition. Now, the next basic structure is going to be about what is unconscious, the design. The design is our genetic body imprint, our physical imprint, this one precious body with its one precious life, that moment of imprinting that creates our physiology, our form. And then we have the duality of the conscious activations, the personality construct. When we explore the shadow self, that is the next basic structure. So we had defined And the next thing we have is not defined. One gets hypnotized by one's conditioning. We can crack the not self in partnership with our clients. If they're dedicated, if they're open, if they're receptive to it, we can crack the not self with our clarity about how it works and get the alignment of the mind with the true process of personal liberation to be combined only by referring that very mind, that personality back to the action of strategy and authority. So it's not about trying to fix it just with awareness. The awareness provides the impetus for being dedicated to experimenting with your decision-making strategy. So it's a two-part process. It's not just about awareness. We always come back to entering the experiment. Now, when you look at human design definitions or kinds of definitions, this is what shows the priority within the functions or centers, how that shows up, what shows up. And you learn that in your analyst classes. We're going to prioritize with our example, this simple split definition, meaning a basic split definition with the split activations that can bridge the split. So one of the different ways in which we are subject to conditioning, we have five different definitions. They give us the conditioning elements for prioritization. These elements are in competition with our true self. When we are surrendered to our form's intelligence, this is simply another way of saying, following your strategy, honoring your authority, you bypass the conditioning elements, except as sources of information and potential wisdom about the outside world. Everybody has everything in the body graph. Another way of saying that, all of these open areas in the body graph are receptive. They are areas of receptivity. Therefore, potential wisdom about what's out there. So we have a not-self shadow hierarchy. The conditioned not-self mind tendencies have the most general influence in this order. First, it's the dream rave design and the type change. We have what are called ghost gate weak points just at the very surface and further depth and detail is taught in dream rave analysis. That's the top of the hierarchy. Secondarily, we have the bridging gates or channels for our basic or quad split definitions. Furthermore, we have the heart center, our willpower function, always trying to prove yourself with material achievements. Ring a bell. Solar plexus, the emotional intelligence function, we have avoiding confrontation and truth, feeling touchy and nervous. 
the G, the higher self, we're looking for love and direction. What's my role here? I'm confused. Who should I be when I grow up? Sixth, we have the splenic center. We have the survival awareness or intelligence, holding on to things that are not healthy for you due to fear. Further, we have the ajna, the conceptualization process, pretending to be certain mental anxiety. Now, if you're having trouble remembering, just check this out. We have the one, two, three punch, one, two, and three right here. Okay, look for those first. And then after that, look for the other awareness functions. Why? Because fear drives humanity's not self, fear is an incredible push of the not self shadow. Further, we have the head inspiration function, thinking about things that don't matter to you, losing focus, trying to answer everybody else's questions. And then further, the root drive and stamina, we have stressed and pressured, hurrying for no good reason. That is also influential to the not self shadows. And then we have our sacral energy resource. When we don't know when is enough is enough, we try to do it all by ourselves. We're overzealous, we're militant, thinking that if it's to be, it's up to me. Mm -mm. That is one of the shadows. And our last shadow, throat, communication and action, trying to attract attention and be the star. So that's the general hierarchy. You're going to learn more specificity when you take higher level training. But in general, you can pretty much, mm, Ra's promise is map out the not self like this. And we teach this in our lower level training. It's the order that we teach the shadows in in BG5. It's what we teach in our mm, basic training. Now look underneath. When you look underneath on the body graph surface, it's just a surface game, but in understanding the life that will live out in this body graph, our job is not to look at the surface in this illusion way. Our job is to deal with what's actually happening in the life. And this is where a lot of people who don't take the qualifications, the certifications, in alignment with the IHDS and Jovian Archive, when they don't learn how the system actually works, they make up things. Okay, they trying to deal with the illusion when you don't really know how the mechanics works is like trying to fix a car without going to school. So we want to pop the hood. We want to look underneath. What's underneath? When we separate out the chart, we are not looking at an ego manifester and a split definition generator. Sorry, not true. This person cannot trust their mind's process of their egoic willpower nature. That's not how this works. So don't misidentify with calling this, oh, you're a conscious ego manifester and unconscious. Mm -mm. The design split apart does seem to appear that way. But remember, we're popping under the hood. We're breaking things apart. We're learning how to interpret the characteristics and qualities from what is conscious versus unconscious. That's one of the most important things to remember. You're just looking at what's conscious versus what's unconscious. And we have concentrated conditioning wherever there are prioritizations. Like as an example, remember this is a split. And so what happens is we start there. And what shows up is the mind will say, I must, I never, I will, I should, I won't, I always, I cannot, because it's a not self mental construct. I can remember before human design constantly saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. It was a constant mantra inside of my, I can't do that. I can't, I just can't. My mind thinks, remember to use that as a tool rather than identifying with I, my ideas. My ideas need to be put out into the world. You never listen to me for my ideas, you know? My mind thinks this idea is really good. Would you like to hear my idea? 
this idea compared to that idea. This one really seems like it might be satisfying, you know, because this is a receptive place. But what the mind says inside of the head about the self is it always goes to black and white thinking. So it's extreme and often rigidly held, even diametrically opposed opposites. Have you ever caught yourself in a lie where you realized you said your mind said this thing and then a few moments later you say something else because you're trying to justify or rationalize what you just said compared to what you're going to say or what you're trying to say or what you're trying to convince the other person you think you're certain of. I've been there. <laughs> I remember. I can remember doing that. Black and white thinking shows up as should and shouldn't and ought to and you ought to. They better. Life would be better. If only persistent complaints and upsets. The mind would, for this guy will show up with making a decision in order to avoid frustration. What you resist persists, yes? These complaints, these upsets, these chaotic beliefs inside of the rigidly held ideas, we can say with this guy, yeah? Ideas about who oneself is, who one thinks what self is. Remember, Ra would say the personality is who you think you think you think you are, and the design is the body's imprint. It is the life living its life, its experience unbeknownst and usually unaware that personality completely oblivious to its uh -huh, uh -uhs, or its sounds that turn into words word formulas this one can speak in words in articulation so consciousness remember the journey here in the beginning is really to understand the personality and its dilemma Understanding the personality in and of itself without any connection whatsoever to the design. That's our first step. Looking only at the personality, the consciousness of the awareness. So here it is. This is what that person is consciously identified with. Unaware of everything that was unconscious. Now there is, remember, we're not looking at Alan Leo anymore when we split apart the chart. Alan Leo is a construct created by that magnetic monopole that holds us together in this illusion of being separate from the totality, this personality with that design. This design configuration with this personality configuration, that monopole holds the key. And the moment that person is following their response mechanism, in this case, their authoritative process, now we have the opportunity for the realignment of the conscious passenger consciousness to this physical form. And then we have the potential for the awareness to flower and bloom, for them to be motivated correctly, for them to see things clearly rather than having their view skewed all the time. It is the definition of the life force that creates the authoritative process in our solar beings. The channels create the life force. For the lunar beings, your life force is in your lunar cyclical nature. There we go. Okay. So all body graphs are constantly in movement. A design is determined by unique energy movement through circuitry. Movement is truth. Without movement, we become stagnant and stuck and we decay and we die. Yes, if you couldn't move one whit, everything's in movement. Your design is in movement. Want to see my movement in my 30s? <laughs> Saturn cycle. That's my movement. All of these energies, learning about life at that time, movement. Movement is part of truth. So what you're going to want to learn how to do is see the body graph movement, the energetic flows from pressure to expression, the thematics that flow into each other. Understanding how this circuit board is 
hardwired. That's what we're looking at when we're looking at definition. We're seeing the hardwiring. The hardwiring is what we can develop as a strength, oftentimes that has been something we've perfected before. And this is our truth. This is our being. This is our sovereign nature. So see the movement of the energy. See underneath, pop open the hood. See what we're dealing with here. And I'm going to guide you through how we're going to work with this one first and foremost, Alan Leo. Here we're looking at the purest state of who he thinks he is. Conscious personality construct is who we think we are. It doesn't mean that it ends up that we precisely think this way. Because you're going to see now that there are things that are going to change it. Watch. Down here, this personality crystal data at this level, it's just personality crystal imprinting. Just data. This is the database on one side. Who we think we think we are. The joke is we have just aspects here, some of these, and yet our mind oftentimes over identifies with what the other side of the channel so here's an example there's that 63 that's going to hook in to meet that four and so if that person is in relationship with that other they may over identify then there's that 11 that meets that 56 as well every quantum the quantum being the unification of the two Conscious personality, unconscious design. And then when we look at the quantum here of one side of the channel versus the other side of the channel, that quantum is something totally different. So we're just looking at aspects here now, just aspects. Reality is we're simply looking at aspects. Another way of saying this, nuances and subtleties, aspects, life aspects, okay? Specific thematics about specific planetary activations that stand for aspects of your life, life aspects. Okay. So think of planets as life aspects. Interpret the chart so that the other person knows what you're talking about. Instead of saying Saturn, say this is the disciplinarian life aspect or whatever seems most appropriate. Awakening can become possible. We want you to begin to see something about the personality here. The way in which ultimately it's awakening can become possible. We begin with the centers always. It doesn't make any difference here. This illusion that becomes Alan Leo happens to be a defined sacral and a defined root. The illusion here is that the personality knows about that and in fact it doesn't. That defined sacral doesn't mean anything whatsoever to someone who is not aware, who is not educated on who they are for themselves, period. If they've not been awakened to their truth, making decisions that they can trust, the awakening can become possible if they attune to their genetic code. But that Unconscious design doesn't make any difference to the personality. In fact, it's one of the deepest areas of conditioning if the mind believes the story. Because one of the first things to recognize is how much a person is conditioned from within. Within. All of conditioning, in fact, comes from within because that's where we're processing it. Even though there may be a transit out there that's pulling you this way or that way, or a person, you're experiencing it in your body. So it's not too far of a leap to see that the body imprint can be a force of conditioning on the mind's process. So here within this particular graph of the personality, we see all the centers that are undefined, not through the conscious personality construct anyway, all of them as potential conditioning forces. It is within, okay, within. Those not self strategies are right there inside of you. And guess what speaks for it? Your mind, all of them, regardless of whether or not in the overall view of this configuration that they end up being defined. 
So if we go back to Lavina's chart and we change it to show just the personality, there you see all of my shadows and distractions, all of them. Despite the fact that unconsciously Lavina has these defined to the mind, my mind would still back in the day, even up until recently, 2019, I can remember asking someone else, should I do this thing over here? <laughs> you know, abdicating authority because my mind thought maybe it might be better to do this other thing. Ooh. Letting go, just letting go. Anything your mind thinks as being truth, always validating, always testing and see inside of the body. The body is the life. These not self strategies, as far as the personality is concerned, any definition of those centers is going to bring out a tendency towards the shadow state, anything. You are receptive wherever there is openness. So all of these places here in the order, avoiding confrontation and truth, touchy and nervous, being the primary shadow state in the general hierarchy. However, when you go into analyst training, particularly at the differentiation degree program, you're going to find a more mm, accurate way of analyzing charts that will help you prioritize much more specifically, much more um, accurately, because you're going to take into account the life aspects. Now remember, in the openness, this is where we're flexible and fluid. And so it's much less predictable, but you're going to get even more accurate. I love that. I love accuracy. I love prioritization and pinpointing details, though I may not be consistent with them. I trust what comes out of my mouth, even if it, oops, sometimes I make a mistake. And that's one of the things I recommend all of you get good with. You do not have to be an expert at this in order to make a difference in someone else's life. Please do not compare yourself to anyone else that you see out there in your study groups. Never compare yourself to me, by golly. And also, remember that those people that are on your fractal path in your reality that you come into contact with, they're going to get exactly what they need from you. No more, no less from whatever stage in the deconditioning process you are at. So let yourself off the hook. You don't have to be perfect. Just be yourself and everything will be in the right place at right timing. Okay. So herein is the potential for the not self strategies. Again, the intensity of the strategy and the way it's going to operate in the illusion on the surface is something that is going to adjust and it's going to adjust to the impact of the design crystal. That design crystal incarnate once compared to life after life, your personality construct incarnating over and over again. The impact of the designs crystal is heavy. It's huge because it is the form construct. That design crystal bringing specific and deep conditioning from within where we see two very specific kinds of of conditioning here. The first conditioning is that the personality has to deal with the conditioning it receives from that design crystal. See how we have it larger here than the personality? Larger than life. We have your body. Your body is the life. Your body has its own way. Your body does its own thing. It takes care of itself. It knows what it needs. Trust your body. Trust your form of course, in context with the fullest expression of truth, decide using your strategy and authority. Try it and see. We see the design crystal conditioning brings about the deepest problems from within the overall being. That second thing to understand is the impact of others. 
and ultimately the impact of the program itself. Did you know that we can see others in the program, in our cycles? We can literally see people in our lives, in our reality, people that we come into contact with. They are part of the program. People are part of the program. I'm part of your program. Have you seen? So second thing we understand how the program itself, others, and the program, everything outside of ourselves, perceivably, what we think we are not part of, that specific deep conditioning from without is paramount to understand. Why? It tells you the reasons for following your strategy and authority that you can't figure this out with your mind. It's impossible. So where the sun and earth are in the personality construct within our human design, something that is enormously important because it changes the rules right away. Changes the rules. Guess what? Not everyone gets an opportunity to live out their fullest expression of purpose. And not everyone gets the opportunity to live out the awareness of their purpose alone. It's not on everybody's fractal to wake up. It's really not the point. The point is awareness. So when we look at this personality sun earth configuration, and we see that it is part of the personality definition, we know then that they are active principles, active principles. So look at all those aspects. They are part of undefined centers, according to the personality construct. Yes, this is something that we need to see clearly. And of course, there's this completely undefined solar plexus and splenic center. And of course, we have the head, all undefined, according to the personality construct. Now, when we look at the nodes, that's really significant because the sun and earth is what I be and the nodes are what I see. Seeing and being part of the primary operative we on this path in life. So in other words, there's this great vertical power between your sun and your earth what is grounding the light of your conscious awareness in the physical form here in the earth or on the other side, the design crystal, the unconscious light of genetic inheritance and the unconscious physical form. So this is the being. What we are aware of is only a third of the story. I like the way I heard Ra describe it. It's that this is a third, and this is a third, and the other third is here, whatever that complete design is. So being is the internal variable being, sun, earth, sun, both sides. That is the programming of your life's work. And then we get to the nodes where we see the programming of seeing. What do we see as we walk along this path in our reality? So when we look at the nodes, it's really significant. Remember, sun and earth, the IB, nodes are what I see. The external variable that shows us our line of geometry. So we have the future, the north lunar node, the past, that south lunar node, being sun, earth, and seeing the nodes. On the conscious personality side, you are aware of that. Unconscious design side, good luck. Takes a while to witness that as it comes out. It's not something that you're constantly aware of, processing, thinking about, trying to figure out all that stuff. It's just not. In fact, if you're operating in alignment, it'll all work out perfectly. It'll do what it needs to do. You don't have to figure this out. But since you and I, we're all human design geeks, we want to help ourselves understand it for ourselves and others. We want to do this work. So if we look right away here, look at the North node in this configuration. Okay. The fact that it's the 60th gate here in an undefined center 
as far as the personality cons is concerned, it thinks that that is an undefined root center, meaning pressure and stress is here. Yeah, a great deal of pressure. Thinking that you have to hurry, hurry, hurry. I've got to get over this limitation. I've got to push. I've got to force. I feel limited, frustrated, stuck. What's wrong with me? Now, this is what they're seeing, and there's a great deal of pressure for them to see because that is their personality nodes, how they're seeing. The nodes are important for us because they give us a way to see. Is it consistent or not? Here, the awareness is inconsistent. It's our slice of the 32 sliced pie, according to Ra, because 64 divided by 2 is 32. And all of us have a specific framework of how we see. And only when we see in that way are we going to have any opportunity to be able to fulfill our purpose because where the nodes are is the path that we're walking in life on the unconscious side, on the personality side. It's the way that we see on that path. And it's how we get to that place of fulfillment. It's the alignment. Together they are our storyline. Now, right away here, we can see there is a dilemma for this personality. It doesn't have a consistent way of seeing in the world. It doesn't. It means at times they're blind. And so you end up in a situation where you try to explain to them what they should see or could see or might see, and they get very confused. You remember keynotes of confusion here? Transcend confusion. Bring about order. Hmm. They get confused because they may not be attuned. I love this word attuned. Attunement to the path that they're walking, to the trajectory, the place in space, deciding with their authoritative processes what gets them there, not trying to analyze all this to figure it out. So remember where your client is at. If you try to go too deep, you may get overwhelmed. You, for you, you may not be able to have the time and energy to explain all this with your client, but to be aware for yourself that the personality does not have a consistent way of seeing. Even if you see in the full totality of this person's chart, that 60 is supposed to be defined because it's unconsciously defined. They are going to be confused. Another thing, they're a six line. You talk to them about their exalted nature and purpose of seeing when they're under 30, good luck. You're going to lose them, most likely. So don't confuse them, hey? The theme here is receptor mechanics. Just the beginning of what conditioning is only on the surface. Watch. Receptor mechanics. For the very beginning of the conditioning, what we have here in this configuration are six centers that are open and you can see so many of the aspects of the personality beginning with the north node yeah and then we have our mercury and venus and mars and saturn and pluto none of them operate consistently and please do your best to translate the planets into words that that person can identify with so you say communication and thinking, values, maturing energy, or immature energy dynamics. You say discipline, limitation, constraint. You say truth, transformation, psychology, that kind of thing. Do your best, okay? It's like you're looking at symbols and you're translating it to them. That's what we are as analysts. We're translators. And you can see right away for this being who you think you are. This right here is going to lay the foundation for who they think they are. Right there. That is what the conscious personality consciously identifies with. Just that. As far as the consistency. And you can see right away for this being, what's going to lay down that foundation is the ego G throat combination. This twin definition along with the three active hanging gates that are a part of it. That thing right there, consistent island, is what that person is consciously, constantly aware of. Now, remember your 
format energies, and the timing of such. Everything operating in a pulse here. Why? Especially because they've got a format energy of the 60. And then this abstract cyclical nature over time needing retreat in order to process and to be aware and to express that memory. Or if there were logic, and there is one logic, two logics here, that is about the pattern and it's future oriented. So remember, how the body graph functions is how you're going to interpret and explain. So much of who this being is, probably in terms of the way that they live this out, is the illusion of their lives. Most of it is lost to conditioning. You as an analyst are here to understand the passenger and their mind's process because those centers, what they do, oh, they screw us up, don't they? As far as we believe the mind story, avoid confrontation and truth, lie, do it all by yourself, do it fast, hang on, hold on, don't let go, pretend to be certain, and what's that over there? Squirrel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Losing focus. We're here to understand the mind of the passenger. So when you look at this configuration, you have to see there's so much more that the personality is not going to be aware of because of all that openness. That openness breeds conditioning, breeds more and more very powerful conditioning the more you believe or identify with the I inside of your head about yourself. When you believe that I is who you are, who you think you are. And I know it takes years, my friends. It's taken me years to let go of that negative and false assumption of belief that I know what I'm talking about inside my head about myself or in context with what I think the other person is doing, why they're doing what they're doing. You know, if I'm projecting, I bet they did this because they want that. Meh. Seven-centered, homogenized construct. As if... The other has a choice. They're playing out the program or not. So am I. We don't have a choice. It is what it is. And the more that you align with the form principle, following your decision-making strategy, honoring the integrity of your differentiated cognition, you get to see the truth of this too. It's kind of like me explaining to a blind man what the sun looks like and flowers the grassy hills, when they have never seen colors in their life. Until you experience this for yourself, until you break through the shattering, the not-self mind's hold on your life, you won't necessarily come from this place of authenticity yet. That's why we have a three-and-a-half-year waiting period for you to get certified, because we want you to have a tipping point, at least, of awareness, so that you're aware when you're passing down the message along your fractal line to your people that you're here for. All of us are here for somebody. They're just waiting for us to be awakened enough for us to get the message along to them. And that's when they show up. When the teacher is ready, the student appears, hey? So shadows, not knowing what to feel, avoiding confrontation and truth, not knowing when to say no, when enough is enough, hurrying to get under pressure and to get things done. There we go. Hurrying under pressure and to get things done. Not knowing what to fear. So holding on to things that are unhealthy. Trying to convince oneself that one is sure and certain of things. Not knowing what is interesting. So we lose focus. All of those things being shadows, potentially, when you believe your mind's story. Everything that's not personality is not personality. He said that, passing on the message. I know it seems kind of simple and dumb, but it is what it is. When we're looking at the personality in this way, even if they're going to share the illusion of having the same body with this imprint, it's only an illusion. Basically, the unconscious doesn't have anything to do with the conscious personality. It's just one of the strange things about how this mechanism works. So when you're looking at somebody's graph, you're not just looking for the big chunky white spaces or the things in between. You're looking at underneath the surface so much more there for us to be aware of and play with. There. 
everything that's not personality. It's just not personality. It's not aware, consciously, perceptually aware. So if we look at the it, this body graph, in that respect, there are 23 completely open channels, completely open. What does that mean? It means they are reflected channels. All of these channels being reflected as far as the receptivity to others. This is where we have openness, an abundance of openness, wisdom, and learning potential about others. And what does the mind do when there is a large open channel there? Somebody sticks that channel into them. And now immediately we blame, says the mind. Why are they so judgmental and bitchy? Have you ever noticed how insatiably judgmental they are? <laughs> or opinionated. Why are you so opinionated? Why are you so fixed in what you say you think? Lavina, why are you so emotional? <laughs> yeah. Other people where we are fixed as far as our nature is concerned, other people being open there can see our difference. And what happens to us as children is we get blamed for our difference. Why are you so competitive? Don't be so competitive with your sister. You have to support your sister, says the tribal ego nature mom. Support your sister. Don't be competitive. Let her win sometimes. What? See that? Isn't that interesting? What happens when we see somebody's definition and they have, let's see, three or four definitions. This one has a ton. Boy, are they ever defined? Mm -mm. Not to the mind, anyway. So we look at this personality, how the personality has got to deal with 23 open channels, 23 receptor fields. Anything that is a receptor field is a conditioning field because this is not who this being is. You have receptivity there, meaning you will never broadcast consistently there, meaning you can never trust as an authority for you to make decisions any place that you have a totally open receptor field. Now, you can learn wisdom. You can learn wisdom about others if you look at a cycle chart as an example. Remember I was saying up here, oh my gosh, I am learning from these people who are so incredibly organized and detailed and opinionated. And man, do they really know what they're talking about because they can be consistent with what they say, with what they think, with what they express. Hallelujah. It's not me. It's me in receptivity, wisdom potential with others, specifically learning about others. Because this is a receptor field. Receptor field is not who this being is. Every single one of these channels, all 23, have a strategy. Shadows, remember. 23 open channels. It's not just a matter of, oh, we've got these open centers. And here's that not self strategy. But you see, you also have sub-themes of the not-self strategies that run out of every single gate that is in those centers. And you have not-self strategies that are in the open centers, open gates, I should say, gates in the open position on the other side. And then you have the quantum of that not-self strategy that emerges in an open channel. And can you see how choiceless and helpless the human beings are now? How subject to conditioning we are. Never again mm, idolizing anybody else's design because you see, oh my gosh, you have so much definition. Sorry, that's not the point. Guess what Ra said would be his ideal design? Total openness. Openness to everything. The more open you are, there is more of a field of receptivity to life, to others. We don't want to get rid of that. That's where we party hardy. That's where we have fun out there in the openness where we experience life. That's where we meet the other. That's where we have the juicy encounters. Oh, I'm thinking sex. Ha <laughs> there it is. You see? Open to sexuality. Because that's open for me. 23 open channels conditioning this person. 
So there's this personality with its two definitions and its bright, shiny G-Center broadcasting its identity. And then there are open channels conditioning all of this. So the other side of this is there's a beautiful side if the conditioning and shadow state is ugly. The beautiful side is that each and every one of those 23 open channels represents a potential for wisdom. So when we look at the body graph in this way, we can see that polarity between pain and wisdom, between suffering and I could say sweetness or success according to my nature. Embrace your shadows. Learn to look at the dark contrasted with the light of your awareness. See it for the maya, the play, the illusion it is. See the mind as a translator of everything that's around you. And remember, the mind is for others because all of this is for others any place that we have open is a place of receptivity, potential awareness of others, potential for wisdom, the receptivity, how thrilling it is to embrace a receptive ability to embrace and accept all of those places of wisdom, being agents of your transformation without them impacting the way that you decide. Because remember, Your authority is paramount. Your authority is yours. Your process, if it's a process, your way, it's your way. So for our intelligence, the moment we are seeing correctly, when we're seeing with attunement and alignment, if we were seeing the way that we are naturally designed to see, our world would be a very different place, incredibly different believing the body because it is the experience of this life. And remember, again, it is the hardware, body is the life, hardware, to our software. They need each other in order for us to experience the sum totality of what this life has to offer us. So it's not negating or hating on or shaming or blaming the personality. There is no fault. This is the manual for no fault living, according to Ra. Yes? So it's not a problem unless you make it so. It's just an awareness. You have your own truth. Your design will tell you what your truth is. And you are here to help guide that other in it as an analyst, guide that other to the awareness that is true for them, not for you. You can impart your awareness at times if they ask, but it's not that you have to make it be something that you are certain of, or that you are aware of, because only they can be aware of their own authority process. Channels themselves are not wise, unless you've got a particularly wise line, like a fully mature six line process, only the openness holds wisdom. So this is an illusion. If you're not seeing the way that you are intended to see, what do you get? You get bitterness, you get frustration, you get anger, you get disappointment. And yet, if you're seeing with unattached observation of what is moving through you, the openness, instead of it being personal to you, the potential for wisdom is absolutely extraordinary. And I'll tell you from experience, it's not like I can hold that constantly. I have emotional waves too. But there becomes this tipping point where you are out of the suffering of identifying with I. And life becomes much more magical, serendipitous, good fortune, good luck abounds. However it is that it's designed to come to you, the pain doesn't last forever like it felt like it did back in the day. I'm not there for months obsessing about how I'm going to kill myself anymore. Thank God. The openness holds the wisdom. The wisdom of what life is about out there. It's specific to you because only you can live your life. Yeah, so what have you encountered? What are those inherent truths 
that you can stand as a living example of six lines? What is that inherent truth for you who are fives that you can bring the message out into the world to strangers, impact us? What is the inherent truth, fourth line friendly beings who are here to uh, be opportunists and penetrate into the network with your familiarity, and your solid process of individuation? What is it, you threes? Oops, I didn't finish. Threes, what have you trialed and erred with you found does not work that you can preach and say, hey, this, d don't do that. That, that wall, that's hard. Don't bang your head against that wall. That'll hurt, you know? Second lines, what are you naturally gifted at that other people tell you all the time that you're so good at? You're genius at this thing. What is that expression of you, your truth, that other people call you out on? First lines, your solidity, your investigative capacity to be an expert, an authority. What is it that you have developed over your lifetime and found the foundation that you can now teach and resolve our fears about? Do you see? Your personality construct, if I were speaking to just the five or just the one or whatever it is on the personality side, that is part of your great big role that you're here to express in the fullness of your educational, hmm, experiential, developmental process. When you are your own authority and you have found those big shoes and you're wearing that big costume of your life's purpose, your life's work, which happens sometime from 50 and beyond, my friends, no rush. I don't get here. What is that thing that you identify with? The oneness? Well, all of these open places, you are a one there. The two-ness, then you are two. Everyone has everything. And yet our resonant frequency, like how neurons that fire together, wire together, or like there, there are grooves of how you think about things in your brain. If your personality three, like me, that is the way for your personality construct. Only the openness holds the pure potential wisdom that is out there for you to grasp or to see or to know the way that you interpret life. So back to our chart here, hanging gates. Yeah, they are enormous the power of our genetics show the enormous conditioning power because hanging gates are always looking for the perfect binary. What's on the other side? So you mean, you see, the meaning here of the hanging gate is that this is what we're attracted to on the other side of the channel. And so we're looking for the other side. I want to give you something to contemplate. Maybe write this down if you're a strategic and you want to remember. When you're looking for difference, that is the very moment that you're losing your own difference. When you're looking for the other, you're trying to connect, trying to figure it all out, trying to make decisions with the other side of the channel. Oh, I want you because with you, I feel whole. That's the moment you're getting conditioned. You're losing your difference. One of the reasons why I recognize this is a recurring theme and a factor within my experience of guiding people through this for the past many years is that one of the most common things that happens is that your life becomes smaller. Now, my perception perspective may be skewed because I deal with a lot of projectors, but instead of initiating and being out there, having the, letting the good times roll with all those generators, we retract to wait for the right recognition, invitation, and whatever our process of authority is. And there is less of that out there-ness. And what happens is when you are alone in your own aura, you are more likely to have the ability to decondition. And you may find that you do not want to be around those big crowds anymore, anymore, or those groups of people anymore. And you're very selective 
or we could say considerate of your body's way, whatever your authority happens to be, instead of that genetic imperative to bond with what is different constantly, looking for, <laughs> oh, my mind just had, you know, that little um, story when you were a kid, are you my mother? Are you my mother? Are you my mother? That little duck that was looking for its mom, <laughs> instead of these little gates trying to find the other side, trying to identify, trying to make decisions about the other side. Instead of that, we have an awareness potential and we operate in alignment and authenticity so that it's not that we're ignoring or trying to avoid others who have that, but that we come in contact with the right other, the right bridging trait, not just any old bridging trait, just trait, just stuff your healthy feel good spleen in mind, please. So I'm not just randomly out there attaching quickly to anybody who has, feels like they could be safe and secure. Mm -mm. Not like that. Not anymore. Okay. Whoa. Hang on. I keep trying to click the mouse. To, there we go. <laughs> to get to the right place. When you look at this configuration of personality, remember, you can see so much of what the personality is doesn't truly accept what it is, what it truly is, you know, it doesn't know. How can it know unless it's experimenting with making decisions that it can trust? So you can see that the sun in the seventh gate is always going to be attracted to 31s, right? There is always this lack of completion in the way in which the sun is looking at things because it's trying to find the other side. For the sun and the seventh gate, they do not na naturally see themselves as having a true role because they don't have consistent influence and their mind is always looking for it. And so are they a natural planner as far as a leader? The twos are unaware. They have to be called out on their gifts and talents. They're not aware. And what the mind is going to think, that 31 is always going to be accepted as conditioning. Is it the right 31 though? Only the decision, the spontaneous response will tell the truth with this case. So when you have a gate and you don't have the other side, the harmonic gate activated, your mind considers it to be a failing or a fault. Even though we have definition down here, the mind has no idea. It still considers failing or fault on the other side of the channel because the personality has no connection to the design in truth. So you have the 16, you don't have the 48. I don't have enough depth. Your mind thinks it's a fault. So that becomes a deep conditioning field. Fear of inadequacy in an undefined open splenic center. The open splenic center is holding on to things that aren't good for you. So holding on to certain things that are not healthy, you think you need to do that in order to have depth. And those things that you hang on to, they end up being bad for you because you're making decisions from fear instead of responding to what is good for you. Hexagram 39 is duration the gate of continuity. The only thing which endures is change. The center itself is the splenic awareness. Within the circuitry, it is the ego. So we now have layers of not self strategy that we can see. If you look at the splenic system, two very powerful forces, that 48 and that 32. And then we've got the open undefined root going to that undefined splenic, very open splenic. So insecure and being under pressure, being afraid and being under pressure and not really having the awareness to know what can endure and thinking that's a physical failing. I'm afraid so I can't take action because I don't have enough depth, says the mind. That's how you would keynote that. Now, remember, you can say may. I always preface, I try to remember, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you now, my friend, now that we've talked about your definition, I'll segue into the openness and I'll say, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to pretend that I'm you. I'm going to speak as if I'm your mind inside of your head about yourself. And while I do this, I'm, I say, I'm going to point at those things that I'm talking to 
in order to show you where your mind is stuck in places that maybe do not serve you. Remember to use the phrases may, could, likely, not certainties, because yeah, it's conditioning. What if they accidentally, lucky for them, stumbled upon waiting for a response rather than initiating? Might not be as much of a problem. So this is part of what you can analyze with respect to compassion for their dilemma. Not telling them what to do, just asking them to experiment with questioning that thought. The thought being, I don't have enough depth and I'm afraid I'm going to be a failure. This is not going to continue, so I'm not going to give it a try. I don't know if this is going to be safe or healthy. So I'm going to hold on to this other thing that obviously doesn't work for me. Maybe it's a person, romantic relationship, partnership. Maybe things will get better. Or maybe the work will get better because maybe that boss will be fired. And then the owner of the company will see how wonderful I am. You see? The mind story. Just living in illusory land. And if you like it there, good for you. If you don't, then experiment and see. So that this well, this gate of depth, you have the ability to connect with others and facilitate or encourage or recognize or identify their depth. That's what you're here for. So you say there's this person who is asked to do something and in the background there's this multi-layered fear. Yeah, fear of inadequacy, of driving mental force that is a not self strategy that impacts the way the minds makes the decisions. I have to take spontaneous action to the resolve this fear of not having enough depth. I don't have the solution. So I'm going to take action in order to avoid this failure. Or maybe I get frozen in fear and I'm not going to take action because I don't want to be seen as a failure. Flip side, I don't want to be seen as a success. Can I tell you? Back in the day when I was very, very wealthy, I hid that wealth from my family because I was afraid what they would think of me. So fear of success is a real thing. If it's completely open, you may not know what to fear. And yet when there's activations that are pointing there, we call them mental conditioners. These are some of the themes that that person may in fact identify with. Can you give them something to remind them not to believe that mind story and to remind themselves to come back to, Am I responding? Does this feel satisfying? You know, is this a good use of my time and energy and so forth? So it's not just about the larger open receptors that we have, these open centers and the catch all phrases that we know already to describe them. But here there are strategies that are going to impact us negatively in not just these open gates, but all the open channels as well. That's a lot all the open channels, receptivity. What happens when somebody else brings that open channel to you or your design brings that open channel? This is dominance when one person has it and the other person doesn't. So if we go back and look at this channel illustration again, you can see right away, it's an enormous impact, the conditioning, the openness, layer by layer by layer by layer from the people. To wrap things up, I can tell you from experience that I did not love myself when I first started this experiment. I looked in the mirror. I constantly saw shame, blame, guilt, fault, regret, something wrong with me, something bad, broken, and flawed. I could not smile at myself in the mirror and love myself unconditionally as I was. It was painful. Where my life had li ended me up, I thought, was deeply embarrassing and I hid, I hid a lot of what I really was. You being in this experiment, you being a potential analyst or an analyst in training, you too can have this transformation and also affect those lives that you touch with this work. Ra says, I am more than a teacher. I am an aware being looking for company. As I repeat regularly, the nine-centered being is here for communion and the expression of outer authority. Variable points clearly to the mechanical potential of the consciousness field. 
we are here to express the uniqueness of our filtering of existence. There is no right or wrong outer authority. The outer authority, like you, is here to be unique. Human design teaches acceptance and respect so that you can love yourself. And I feel very grateful that you've been with me this long to be able to receive the message and to take it out into the world in your own way. <laughs>